Let's get your child's iPad set up with safety measures. We're gonna go over the full steps, step by step, and also explain what each feature does. So let's dive in. Step one, you wanna set up family sharing. Start by heading into your iPad settings, tap your name at the top of the sidebar, and you'll notice family setup here. Tap it. Here you can add your child's Apple ID. If they already have one, you'll see it under family members. Otherwise, create a child account with the symbol at the top right. Follow all the prompts, agree to the terms. Now you can set your name and age of your child so they have access to the appropriate apps for their age. Creating a separate account for your child allows you to view and change settings remotely from your iPhone or other iPads, making it easier to manage safety features without needing the iPad back for every little change. Step two, setting up parental controls. After adding your child, iPad will guide you into the main parental control settings. You'll see a couple of options here content restrictions, communication safety and limits, app website and activity, screen distance, and ask to buy. You can change some of these settings here, but for the most in-depth changes, we'll need to head over to screen time settings. Step three, content restrictions. While you're still here, go ahead and tap onto the content restrictions. You can set up age appropriate app ratings. That's five plus, nine plus, 13 plus, 18 plus, and unrestricted. There's also movie and TV show ratings like G, PG, 18 plus, and R. Next one is pretty important. Web content. You can choose to leave this unrestricted, allowing your child to view any website, limit adult websites, which make sure all graphic websites are inaccessible, or allowed websites, which comes with a selection of websites pre-registered and you can of course add your own sites with the button at the bottom. Books and Apple Media, set between clean or explicit. Music videos, you can turn this off if you're concerned about visual content in these videos. Explicit language, turn this off so they cannot curse or see explicit words using Siri. Image generation. This is specifically for iPads with Apple Intelligence. This is an app on iPads that lets you create images using sentences. It's a cool experience and it's not really super dangerous as it's already quite restricted on how you use it, but your mileage may vary. And deleting apps. This makes sure your child does not accidentally delete apps. Turn this on because in the next section, we're gonna go over how to set up permissions for downloads and purchases. So if they download a new app, they won't accidentally delete it and require permission from you to re-download it every time. Step four, screen time. To change the rest of the settings, let's head over to screen time on the sidebar as we'll have more in-depth controls. Here you'll want to enable app and website activity. This setting disables the iPad apps except for the ones you choose at this specific hour. So you can set the iPad to not access games past 10 p.m. when it's time for bed, but you can still access things like phone, messages, FaceTime, and whatever else you set here. The next setting is app limits. This lets you set a limited amount of time to access certain apps. Perhaps you want your child to only play games for one hour instead of the whole day. Well, you can set that up here. Always allowed? This lets you choose apps that can always be allowed regardless of the hour. I highly suggest you keep phone and messages here so your child can contact you anytime. And if you wanna make sure they're not staying up late texting their buddies, you can select which contacts are allowed even during downtime with this setting at the very top. And screen distance. Turn this on so the iPad gives a notification if your child is sitting too close to the screen. Step five, communication safety. Still inside screen time, you have the ability to set who your child can text. Perhaps you don't want to allow strangers to provide their phone numbers and access your child. Well, you can set this to only allow contacts. Then you'll be able to add contacts to your child's account and they'll only be able to message those people. You can also see that downtime allowed communication setting is here as well. Set this to just you and the family members for when it's bedtime. Below these, we have communication safety. It detects inappropriate images and blocks them from being seen or sent. You might want to turn this on for your kid's iPad. Step six, content and privacy restrictions. Go ahead and check through all these and make sure they're set correctly for your child. Let's go over all these settings. Apps. You can set whether they are allowed to install or delete apps and if they can make in-app purchases. I highly suggest you turn off in-app purchases because tons of games cost real money inside of the free game and your child might not realize it. Allowed apps and features. Perhaps you don't need your child to access CarPlay so they can't mess with your music while you're on a road trip. You can turn this off if you see it fit. App Store, Media, Web, and Games. This is what we set up at the very start, but now you have access to more controls. Check to make sure the top stuff are how you set it previously, but take note of the bottom area with Game Center. Game Center allows you to customize their safety, whether they're allowed to play multiplayer games, and you can make it so they can only play with friends you approve. You can set if they can add their own friends, talk to them online, record their screen, play multiplayer with people nearby, message people inside of games, if they can edit their online game profile, and if they can change their nickname. Next, we have Intelligence and Siri. 
This lets you customize how much Apple intelligence they can access. Perhaps you want to disable image creation but leave on writing tools. Well, that's possible. Intelligence Extensions is for apps that tap into Apple intelligence. With iPadOS 26, app developers can directly use AI inside of their apps, so you'll either need to vet apps or outright disable this feature. And of course, you can set it if you want your child to access Siri. Even if you allow Siri, you have access to these settings like web search content and explicit language. And lastly, you can also disable Siri math results so your child cannot cheat on their homework. Step 8. Lock parental settings. And lastly, we can lock these changes into settings. This makes sure the iPad remains exactly how you set it for your child and none of these settings can be changed to bypass safety measures. All these settings only show allow or don't allow, but to actually set these settings up, you'll need to find the appropriate section with the left sidebar. For example, Face ID and Passcode can be found under the Passcode area on the left. Accounts at the top, Reduce Loud Audio and Speaker Volume Limit are both found inside of the sound setting. Step 9. Extras. Okay, so we've gone through all the basic family settings, but now I want to talk about some extras that you should definitely look into. We spoke about volume limits. To change that, go into your settings and change the limit. You can disallow changes from this limit in the previous section under screen time restrictions. And for driving focus, if your child is getting to the age where they're starting to drive themselves around and you want to make sure they don't use their phone while they're driving, you can do some cool things. Go into focus, driving, and add yourself and a few others who you trust won't bother your child in these settings. Now you can make sure that when your child starts the car, this focus will actually start. Well, there's an app called the Shortcuts app built into every Apple device. Go ahead and open that, press automation, and create a new automation. Look for Bluetooth and choose your car. Press next and choose driving focus. Now when your child connects their car's Bluetooth to their phone or iPad for music or directions, their device will automatically enter into driving focus. This is more applicable to iPhones as no one really uses their iPads while driving, but all these things we've discussed in this video applies to both iPads and iPhones, so you can set up your child's iPhone using these exact same steps. If you think that Shortcuts app section is really cool, well, you'll be glad to know we have an in-depth video on how to make your own shortcuts and you can literally do anything you want, which is super awesome. You can customize your Philips Hue light bulbs to turn on and off at certain hours or if you get home. You can make sure your Tesla gets heated 15 minutes before you get in your car for work. You can even have your iPhone or your CarPlay pull up maps when you're getting ready for school. It's really cool. Go check out our shortcuts video. And if you found this video helpful, make sure you leave us a like, share this with your friends who have iPad kids, and subscribe because we post awesome Apple tips and tricks. Thanks for watching. Soft Torino. Tiny apps that make a gigantic difference.